is it Thursday again? <laughs> Hi, it's Thursday. Can't believe it. Here I am back again. Melissa Kerman with Melissa's Crafting Treehouse uh, with some fun, fun things planned today. So um, if you read my little description, you might have noticed that um, I have hardly any announcements today. I don't even have an outline. <laughs> That's because there's hardly any business. Yay! <laughs> going, gonna go pr almost straight to projects. So I see a couple people have joined in. Welcome, thanks for for, uh, for coming. Say hello, hello Marilyn, welcome. So uh, this is Facebook Live. If you're joining in on the replay, I'm glad you, you stopped by. Um, and I got just a tiny little bit in the way of announcements and then a bunch of projects to show you from um, the three projects from the Simple Sweet Stampers Tutorial Bundle, which you can get for free with orders um, in my online store, or as a team member, you get it for free automatically every month. And so that's pretty cool. Anyway, so it's eight tutorials in the bundle, and uh, the focus of today's uh, bundle, this month's bundle, I should say, is the Gingham Gala Suite. So I'm gonna show you that in just a bit. Before I do that, quick little announcements and a little bit of um, a little note on creativity. So today, as some of you guys know, I'm a, I do yoga. I am a yoga practitioner. I love yoga. And my yoga teacher shared this. So um, she says, uh, okay, there you go. Can you guys see it? I actually turned the camera so you guys can actually read it. So it says with, uh, let's see, without art, the earth is it. Eh. <laughs> Do you guys get it? So art is in the middle of earth. So we need art, creativity and art. It's so important to life and to our sense of well-being and existence in the world. I believe that wholeheartedly. I actually have this awesome magazine I couldn't help but get. I actually was selling it at Walmart. The Science of Creativity. There's a couple of quick little quotes I'm going to share with you in here. I hope you don't mind. It's just, I just love this. And when I was in college, I studied the brain, <laughs> neuroscience. So creativity in the brain is just like right up my alley. It's perfect. Okay, so anyway, this one quote, and I could read all day long from this magazine. It's just chock full of stuff. So anyway, it's, um, it's creativity is a much as much a part of our toolkit as walking on two legs and having a big brain. Now, is that not true? I think it's so true. I know I'm gonna got, not going to get any people arguing with me here because you guys are all creative types. Um, and you will appreciate this. So the next thing I wanted to share is, um, well, chapter one, the creative animal. And it says, uh, the impulse to invent and innovate is an integral part of being human. So true. Hi, Andrea. Hi, Tanner. <laughs> You're joining in. So we're talking about creativity, creativity in the brain, just for a sec, the science of creativity. So the other quote I wanted to read was, Creativity is the art of combining a little idea with another little idea and so on. At, and at the end, maybe a great idea will come up. So it's like add one thing on top of another on top of another. Creativity isn't really that complex. It's just, um, you know, coming up with new things and layers of things. So anyway, that's my little, my little quote for the day. <laughs> so, um, and for those of you who didn't see it, Earth without art is eh. <laughs> that was the first thing I shared if you missed it. So kind of fun. So I have one quick little business announcement, not a lot on the business front today. Um, and that is the launch of the new Stampin' Up! storage line. So I have not received mine yet. I ordered mine yesterday actually. So it's a modular system. I'm going to show you a quick flyer. This was in my newsletter and there's links on my website. And these are all little stacking elements. I think the pictures are so pretty. And in my newsletter, there was a little link to um, the quick little video that uh, Stampin' Up! created for it, just to kind of show how it all fits together. So super, super fun. So check that out. And if you're not a newsletter subscriber, subscribe. I do special perks just for subscribers, in fact. Alrighty, so a little bit about the focus of today's project. So. Um, Again, we're focusing on three of the tutorials from the Simple Sweet Stampers tutorial bundle for April. And um, hi, Sharon, welcome. <laughs> if I've missed anybody, I'm sorry. I'm just not, not looking straight at the, at the phone all the time to know who's there, um, but I'll catch you um, on the replay. All right, so we're working with this Butterfly Gala set, 
which is part of the suite. This is a bundle. It wasn't available for um, for a while, and now it's back to being available. I got it. Yeah, where am I? <laughs> Um, so anyway, super excited that that's back because when it first came out, I was playing with it like crazy and then it wasn't available for a while. So I kind of laid off. So I'm very excited to be back playing with it. So some other things that are in this suite are the Gingham Gala designer paper, um, and these little embellishments and this lovely ribbon. So I'm going to show you a few things with all of these products today. And you guys may remember when I, way back when I shared a couple of other projects, I shared this lovely array of butterflies. Of, uh, different ways to do all of them and I did a, a graphic on my site so aren't those pretty okay so I have to show you and this is kind of strange but guess what I'm wearing today my shirt has butterflies on it it actually looks like um, uh, the framelits that go with the beauty abounds I think anyway <laughs> can you tell I like butterflies just a little bit I thought about changing my shirt earlier and I thought no 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 I gotta wear the butterflies all right, so so that without further ado, I'm gonna turn the camera down uh, and I'm gonna show you what I got in store for us. So again, trying to get trying to get elegant in how I do this. <laughs> it's a bit of a challenge. There we go. Ah, uh, you guys get to look at my plain old ceiling for a second. And now I'm gonna turn it down. Okay. Let's check the lighting. Make sure you guys can see. Last week I had this weird thing where when I moved away from the camera, when it was facing me, uh, everything it got dark for a second and then light again. It was just really, really weird. So hopefully, that, I don't think that was happening earlier. Okay, so just like I do with these Facebook Lives, I'm not going to show you um, the project at the end. I'm going to just keep it for fun for the end. <laughs> Thank you, Kathleen. Glad you like my shirt. <laughs> One of my favorites. And I'm also, speaking of favorites, my shirt's purple and I'm working with purple. Now, the person that originally designed this first uh, tutorial, um, and oh gosh, her name is, is skipping my mind. I know who it is. I know her. Her name is Debbie DeShane. Uh, she lives in California, and she created a beautiful project. Now, she did hers in yellow, and I did a version in yellow, but I couldn't help myself but mix it up and do it in purple. So we're going to start with a purple card base, and we're using some of this really lovely laser-cut paper. And um, let's see, it's called, I forget what it's called, the Delightfully Detailed Laser Cut Paper. And I'm going to show you a full sheet of it with some of the other products in the suite, that product suite. So there's um, cards that you can get and little embellishments. This ribbon goes with it too. Can you guys see? I did the thing where you turn the camera backwards so you can see the writing going the right way. So everything's kind of backwards for me. So it's a little bit, if I'm going to the left when I'm supposed to be going to the right, that's why. Because <laughs> when I look down, it's going the opposite way. All right, so this is how we're gonna do this. Um, it's gonna come together really fast. So I've got a piece of the Gingham Gala designer paper. It's a big check on the back, small check on the front. I shared this tip with you guys last week about using these plasticide sheets so I can put adhesive on ahead of time. Makes the whole process of showing you stuff a lot faster. And then <clears throat> I'm using the stitched shapes framelits. I'm sorry, the rectangle stitched framelits. And there are a ton of these. So for this particular one, you can see I've got my shape cut out. This is, this is how it all fit together. So there we go, and there we go. There you go. There's my layering. So you can do this um, uh, with lots of the different sizes. And I have skipped a size. So this is the third and fifth in, so one, two, three, and then four, five. And then the other version um, is done with four and two, if that makes any sense. I think that makes sense. So you guys get the idea. These stitched framelits are so fun. There's so many of them, just a ton. So I'm uh, having fun with them. All right, so we got this piece, and now we got our frame. And you're like, what's she going to do? <laughs> I got my piece right here. And what I've done is I'm going to just take my laser cut paper, place it down on my plasticized little sheet. Now there's adhesive on the back side of this purple piece, so that's why I'm leaving it on there. My frame has adhesive on the back side also. So I just hand cut this down. You can see it's like an odd edge. I didn't cut it evenly or anything because I didn't feel like that was 
really necessary. And actually, I'm going to switch things and do that instead because I'm forgetting a, a little detail. So I'm just going to place it right down on there. And because there's e adhesive on the back side of the frame, voila! Isn't that nifty? So easy, right? Um, ah, you like those framelits, huh, Tanner? <laughs> Cool. Oh, you like purple too, Andrea. Oh, that's so awesome to know. I, I always, um, anyway, I always try to remember the colors that people like, but you know, that's hard to do. So um, anyway, so we're going to do that. And now um, I'm going to put this on dimensionals. I, it's kind of an experiment because the original version didn't do that. But you guys, if you know me at all, you know I like dimensionals. And I really want to see how it looks up. Um, so... Now, we're gonna... now the tricky thing here is I have all this adhesive underneath, so guess what? That means I got to use a lot of dimensionals so that it covers it up. This is, you know, it's all live, right? So some of this stuff I got planned out, and some I just kind of wing. So at the moment, I'm just kind of winging it. So since we have Tanner here on the call, I'm just going to tell you, Tanner is the uh, demonstrator development manager for the Southeast region. And he is my contact uh, for my on-stage presentation, which is coming up in, uh, uh, let's see, nine days. <laughs> hey, I practiced today. I practiced my presentation today. You'll be proud of me and uh, tweaked it and stuff. So I'm really super excited. I've got these brand new products that I get to show and such an honor to be able to be showing some products that that no one else has seen. I feel so lucky. So anyway, that's going to be super fun. So the more prepared I am, the less anxious I'm going to be. Right, Tanner? <laughs> He's like, yeah. <laughs> it's going to be really fun. Okay, so I'm just adding my dimensionals on here. And where I've saved time on other things, I'm taking time on this because it's taken a little while. All right. So now, what's going to happen is this is going to go on here, but I'm going to put this on the front of my card first, figure out my spacing just a little bit, because i got a sentiment that's going to go at the bottom. So I'm justifying it just a little bit up, and then, ah, yes, to remove all the backings. So who else has these um, dimensional backings all over their house? Anybody? <laughs> I know you do. If you're a stamper. Oh, you're being a tease, Tanner. You're telling him my projects about my projects. <laughs> you're so sweet. Okay, so now Tanner's wife is, is, do you mind if I tell you? Can I say it? Will you say it? Has the big event happened? <laughs> Tanner's wife is pregnant. I hope you don't mind me saying. Do any day now. So I can't wait to hear. And uh, they've got to be on pins and needles. Okay. Let's see. Did I see Amy joined us? Yay, Amy's here. Welcome, Amy. Okay, so I got my laser cup paper attached to the back. I've got my crazy number of dimensionals there. Ooh, that's going to look so pretty. I love dimensionals. Oh, isn't that pretty? Okay, it's going to be very delicate card, of course. Don't dare rub it because that laser cut paper is sticking up, but it'll be okay. Whoever gets it will have to be, you know, they'll just be super careful with it. Okay, so I have stamped this little tiny piece. It's like three eighths inch, three eighths inch wide, and then I used my paper snips, cut down the middle, and then cut it into the center. So I did that a little bit ahead of time. Since I'm doing three projects and uh, you guys might have something else to do tonight, I'm taking a few little shortcuts. Okay, so now I have cut out, stamped, and cut out some butterflies. I'm going to do a little bit of the stamping of the butterflies later, but um, you guys uh, know how to punch out stamps and uh, punch out stamp and punch out things. <laughs> so I'm not going to focus on that too much. This one is just stamped with gorgeous scrape on the Highland Heather cardstock. This one is stamped on white cardstock. And that one, I actually used the Highland Heather blends to color it in. So I did that all ahead of time just to kind of keep things, um, keep it quick. 
All right, so now I'm just gonna put these on. I even have glue dots on the back, trying to be so efficient. All right, so I'm gonna put that one up in the corner, and that one over here, and then I always like to make those little wings come up. Who else likes butterflies here? Anybody? Oh, yes. Sharon, you like purple too. Yay, we're purple lovers. So check that out. Isn't it so pretty? It's gonna, so now I get to show you the original design done in yellow, slightly different, um, just for fun. Okay, so you get to compare. I can't do the same thing twice. So, you know, I can't just copy something, like, really? <laughs> okay, so here is the original design. And for, for this one, of course, it was flat. And then, as I mentioned, it used the four and six, fourth and sixth framelits in the set, right? And the yellow is really bright and cheery. And then I also heat embossed the little butterflies in white and colored them in. So I got a little detail there. And this was done in the same, same way, just I made the frame bigger on that one, popped this one up, so you can just see two different versions. So what do you guys think? Yellow and purple, complementary colors. What is the sentiment? It's backwards. Really? I thought I made it so it would be straight. Oh, no, it is backwards. Dang it. Okay, let me see if I can switch this. Oh, I'm always afraid to do this when I'm in a live. Dang, now I'll be actually moving in the right way. Yay, it's back to right. Okay, so it says, you've been on my mind. So pretty neutral, easy sentiment, right? You can use that for all kinds of things. Okay, so that's project number one. I'm gonna just reset myself, put a few things away, and get up project number two. So project number two is kind of a fun fold. I'm using framelits for this one also, and I'm using the country floral um, embossing folder, the stitched shapes framelits, and the layering circles. Um, and I've used these two layered for this project. I love how the stitch shape framelits layer with the circles and the squares and the, and the ovals. It's just so convenient. Okay, so here's all my materials. Got them all organized. Okay, so now when I was reading the instructions for this one, I'm going, how does this one come together? I'm so confused. I'm like, okay, I have to make this one because I need to figure out how it actually works. And it's, it's very fun. I think you're gonna like it. So um, I thought it would be a good one to show because if it was unclear to me when I was reading the instructions, it probably would be to others. So it seemed to make sense. Okay, so it's basically a piece of Grapefruit Grove cardstock. This is dry embossed. I did that, of course, ahead of time off camera. And I'm just gonna go ahead and attach it. Now I cut down my Grapefruit Grove to be a tiny bit smaller than a quarter sheet. So instead of uh, four and a quarter by five and a half. I cut it maybe a sixteenth inch less, and that's because this card comes together in a different way. So, um, essentially, this is a piece of eight and a half by, I think it's three and a half. It goes over the top of the card instead of like to the side, right? Could actually go to the side too, but the way it was designed it goes to the top of the card. So we're just gonna go ahead and attach this to the card base. I'm gonna use some, the liquid glue just to make it quick and it's a nice big piece. Sometimes I don't like to use this because it gets on my fingers, but um, for this one, since it's a nice big piece, it's just fine. Okay, so it's justified a little bit to the left because there's gonna be another element coming off the side. Now one of the things that's nice about the liquid glue also is that you can move it around a little bit if you don't like exactly where it is. So I did that because once that this piece folds over, some of the length sort of um, gets eaten up by the fact that it's folded over, and that's why I made my base just a tiny bit smaller. And so there we go. Okay, so the other thing I did was I put a white piece on the inside because obviously the inside of that is all textured so you can't write on it. So here is a spot to now write on. Yippee skippy. All right, 
Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little bit of my ribbon. Now, the original design used the tool polka dotted ribbon and I didn't have that, so I think that's where it kind of gets fun is you just kind of got to use the things that you have. So I'm just going to tie a bow. Not my favorite thing to do on camera. <laughs> Who doesn't like to tie a bow? I'm actually pretty good at bows, but I like to do them. Um, uh, I like to do like air bows. So I don't have to worry about it staying tight, especially on camera. That's working okay. I'm busy looking down. I don't know if you guys are saying anything. Is anybody saying anything? Say something. Hello. <laughs> I think actually the comments went away because I pressed this other button because now it's... Ah, there we go. Now there's people. Hey, Barbara. Yay, she's here. <laughs> Welcome. So glad to have you here. Okay. Please chime in and say if you're there. It's always so nice to see who's with me today on these lives. Okay, so that's a little bit bulky, but... We're going to go with it. And I need a scissors to trim off the end. So the tool, the, what, they, what she originally used, this was Katina Martinez's design, um, is much thinner and sort of not as bulky. So I don't know if I'm going to like this one, this ribbon in the end, but, you know, we'll just see how it goes. And I'm going to bend this up a little bit to move it a little bit more to the right. You guys know that trick, right? Bow the paper so you can move it a little. All right, so now ahead of time, I have punched out the Grapefruit Grove scallop circle. Hi, Amy from Canada. <laughs> and this piece that goes on top. And we're gonna stamp the sentiment right in the middle. And I am using maybe my sentiment stamps. The Grapefruit Grove. So this is all a tone on tone card, just super crisp and simple. And the sentiment is the good things in life are better with you. Isn't that so true? Thank you all for being here. Okay. And we're not going to do it on there because I got dimensionals on the back, which means it'll be all wonky. So I got to make sure I'm paying attention to what I'm doing. Stamp the sentiment. And now I'm gonna put some butterflies on here and this is where, oh, a little bit of fun begins. I've, sp I've stamped a bunch. Now, um, in the original design, what she did was she just used a couple of these um, images stamped on white in the Grapefruit Grove, but I wanted to kind of experiment with a couple other things as a way of showing you how to use um, the stamps in the set. So there are in the set four images that are combined butterflies. So here's one of them. I don't know if anybody, any of you guys have that. So this is how it comes. The top butterfly is attached to the bottom bu butterfly. Um, and then there are also images in here. This is the one I'm playing with right here. This and this that superimpose over the butterflies so that you can get different colors on the top and the bottom if you want. Um, and did I, I did some of these somewhere. Where did I do them? Oh, I did them. Um, okay. I won't tell you now. So it's, it's a surprise. Okay, so anyway, what I'm going to try is I'm going to try, like, coloring them in. And that's what I mean, stamping the color in. But I'm going to stamp off. So I used first ink for the um, outside, and I'm going to stamp off and just add a little bit of color to this butterfly. It's hard to be right over the top when the camera's right there in my face. Not too bad. Not too shabby there. So as you can see, I have two stamps on the same block, I just turned it over, and now I'm doing the bottom. So that's one option. And there are also little itty bitty uh, images to stamp on that butterfly. So I'm gonna do that too. Again, I'm gonna stamp off. I can't believe, okay, I, I can't speak too soon because as soon as I pat myself on the back for doing this right. I'm going to mess it up. Ah, that's pretty darn good. <laughs> okay. Again, another one. So this is probably the one that I'm going to use, but I wanted to show you one other option. Okay, so I'm going to just quickly wash those stamps off camera. 
and you can see now I have these done and these are stamped in Calypso Coral which is a really nice coordinating color for um, uh, to go with the Grapefruit Grove kind of a tone on tone look so actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stamp um, I could do it stamped off. You know what? I'll do it two ways. I'll stamp it off with the Grapefruit Grove. We'll see what we like better, and then we'll decide what we want to use on the card. Because you guys are going to help me, right? Say yes. Do hearts. <laughs> I'm always egging for you guys to, to show me some love, like do some hearts on there. Um, okay, so... Doing that. Now I could have actually used the Calypso Coral and stamped off as well. And that's kind of what I was thinking I would try for the second one. So we can decide what we like. Where's my Calypso Coral? Where did it go? It's lost on the table. Is it somewhere? Anybody see it? Oh no. <laughs> Maybe I'm not doing this. Oh yeah, I put it away. I'm always taking things out, putting them away. Okay, so... I am going to do the Calypso Coral stamped off on the Calypso Coral. We'll see whether we like one or the other better. So it looks a lot more red, doesn't it? I think, yeah, that's clean already. Nope, oh, darn it. I went back onto the Grapefruit Grove. Always good to put the stamp ink pad you're not using off to the side. So I want to know, has anybody out there ever re-inked an ink pad with the wrong ink? <laughs> Didn't look at the actual reinker bottle? You don't have to answer because it's kind of embarrassing, but I will because I have. <laughs> and, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's not good. It's a bad thing. I've had to throw away one ink pad once. So, words of the wise, make sure to check that you're putting the right ink on the right uh, ink pad. <laughs> All right, so here's what we're going to do now. I did stamp these, right? So now the next thing is to punch out these butterflies. So I'm use my punch. They're perfectly lined up, which I love. Hi, Joyce. Welcome. So what we want to do is, I love it that they punch out at the same time. Just line them up. Do this set as well. I have a, a customer friend who she just loves how they pop out when you punch. It's like you practically can hear her giggle. It's just too cute. Okay, and then I'm going to punch out one of these. So now what I like to do when I make all these butterflies is then you just kind of play with them, right? And see what you like best. So let's turn them all over. So I think we're done with these colors. I'm going to put them away. I like a relatively clean workspace. I'm not using that. This and this. Let's get all get our stuff all together here. Oh, I'm forgetting one really important piece. And I put my ribbon on. I need my paper, my designer paper on the front of this. Let's just tuck it in here. It's a little harder to get it in place with the ribbon on there, but I can do it. I believe in myself. <laughs> Again, cracking myself up. Okay. All right. Yes, it looks like the butterflies are flying out off the punch. Okay, so isn't that looking pretty so far? It just looks so, I think, just so happy. Happy and cheerful. Okay, I'm gonna push that up a little bit. Now we get to see what we think of butterflies, which ones we wanna use. Now you guys might. And I'm not done with these butterflies, so once I decide which ones I'm gonna use, there is one more step. Okay, so that's the Calypso Coral. I think it looks too bright. And, you know, I'm the executive here because I'm actually here. <laughs> Okay, this is the combination of both. That one's a little bit better. I think I might need the big butterfly at the bottom. A little butterfly at the top. I think I need a third butterfly. Okay, 
That might be how I want to go. I think I want to do that. Something like that. Hmm. All right, anyway, okay, so now that I've decided, have I really decided is the question. Because I'm, I'm one to kind of hem and haw over, oh, let's change it this way. Let's, okay. Anyway, <laughs> so now I'm going to use this little body stamp. This is the body for the little itty bitty butterfly, and this is the body for the big butterfly. And I intentionally waited to do it until now because um, if you do it ahead of time, it's really hard to know that you have it in the right spot and you'll end up sort of cutting off part of the, the butterfly or the body, I should say. So I am taking this piece of, um, I could, you, know, you can take colored paper or something dark because when you put your butterfly down, you want to be able to see the edges of the white. So you'll make sure you're actually stamping it in the right spot. And for this one, I'm going to use Calypso Coral. And for this one, the pointy part of the body is actually down and the fatter part is up because you can kind of see that by this shape. But by doing it this way, and if I were, didn't have the camera here, it'd be a little bit easier, but I'm just going to stamp it right on there so you can see I have a little bit of white around the whole thing. And then I'm just going to turn my block over and I'm going to do the same thing with my little itty bitty butterfly. Now, if you use a mat like this, these are good with um, the photopolymer stamps to get a good inking, but if you push too hard, you'll actually get kind of a smushed out image. So, just word to the wise, that happened on some of the ones that I did. Oh, and I need to do one more. Let's do this one. And that one needs Calypso Coral. Where am I? Where's my Calypso Coral? Oh, right there. It was really right there in front of me, guys, and I couldn't see it. Okay, last one. All right. So then all I have to do is do my attaching, and my card is pretty much done. A little bit of my white glue. And I am going to attach the butterflies with glue dots. I like to put them in the center. And now I have put dimensionals on this piece to one side because I want that side to be on here and the side that's hanging over to not have dimensionals on it. So I have to think about this strategically so I don't put it on wrong. Oop. See how it slides a little? It's kind of a good thing. Okay, now, here we go. Almost done with this, and then we're on to the third one. So anybody out there who has gotten the tutorial bundle, I know my team members have, anybody who's out there that's a team member, and has played with them, please chime in and tell people what you think. Um, it's been really fun for me to, to play with other people's designs and just makes it a great creative jumping off point for a design. And then, you know, you, you get inspired to tweak it a little bit with your own little elements, maybe. Where's my glue dots? Everything's pretty much within arm's length in my crafting space, which is so awesome. And I am standing up while I do this, by the way. Does anybody else stand up when they craft? <laughs> ah, yes, thank you. I'm so glad you like that tip, Kathleen. Yes, so many things to remember, and things to try and do. Okay, so now I gotta get my placement of these wherever I want them. I'm gonna put the big guy at the bottom. Put that one over there. Something like that. Okay, there we go. Isn't that cute? I think it's cute. And a fun different opening. Of course, you gotta write around your ribbon. But it's better than not having any place to write at all, right? So what do you guys think? Comment and let me know. <laughs> Bye, Tanner. Thanks for joining us.
<laughs> okay, one more project, and that last project is actually my contribution to the tutorial bundle, and uh, possibly the most complicated, but that's true to form. So um, I am only going to do parts of it and show you the kind of gist of it so you get the idea. Okay, I'm bringing the last project in, but I gotta take all the other stuff away. So give me one second. Doing three projects. It's kind of a lot to do. <laughs> it's like orchestrating. But then it's good practice for my, uh, my on stage presentation. So for this next one, I'm actually gonna use um, all of these images here and let's see I'm gonna actually show you am I gonna show you the project I'll show you in just a second all right okay oh you like that the, yes the country floor I love that so the country floral embossing folder is gonna be in the big catalog we have been told so I'm very excited about that so for this card Actually, I can't put that on yet. I'm actually going to start with um, something I love to do, and that is coloring my ribbon. See my little lace trim right there? And I'm going to color it to create an ombre kind of effect. So the top portion, let's see, actually the whole thing is going to be seen. So I'm going to be using, sometimes I'll hide the top behind, but not on this one. So I'm using the fat side and I'm going to just color my ribbon. So I'm doing the light Bermuda Bay at the top and then I'm going to do the bark, the, <laughs> the bark, <laughs> I'm going to do the bark, the dark Bermuda Bay, oh my gosh, I can't talk, at the bottom, getting my letters mixed up. So now I'm using the dark I love my blends and then you're just going to kind of work it until you get it the depth of color that you want and when you do it on the side like this using the side of the the blends it's just a little bit gentler on your the tip because one thing I have noticed with the blends alcohol markers is um, that tip gets kind of frayed and worn, a little tattered and worn. And, you know, part of that is, you know, in some cases you need to use the tip, but uh, it would really get frayed if I were doing it with the tip on this ribbon, especially since it's got so much texture to it. So I, I think I'm going to just leave it right like that. So what I'm doing with this piece right here, it has adhesive on the back. So. I'm not going to take it off of there, but I am going to place my ribbon where it's going to go using my glue dots, one on either end. Okay, I have to look up and see if anybody's commenting. Hi, Deborah from Minnesota. Welcome. <laughs> You're a new name. I don't recognize your name, I don't think. And hi, Karen. I do recognize your name. <laughs> oh, you stand when you craft. Yes. It's um, especially useful it seems when I'm doing Facebook lives but it's also better for my body because <laughs> if I'm just sitting constantly it kind of gets to me after a while okay so I'm lifting that off just to get the placement I'm gonna wrap it around and then I can go ahead and put it on my card base So there's the start of everything. And then my navy piece is going to go on here. And then my focal, I'll just do some quick stamping and then I'm going to show you some other options for how I can do the butterflies. I've actually done some over here that you probably already saw. But I'm just going to do some quick stamping. So basically, you know, when you go to a butterfly house, if you guys have ever been to a, like a butterfly house, um, you'll see like a wall of, well, they're actually dead butterflies, but it looks really pretty. And so this, that's the sort of feel I was trying to go for in creating this card. So I'm starting 
the top with one of my butterfly images. And I'm kind of building my wall of butterflies. Now this is kind of my central focal butterfly pair right there. And now this one's going to get covered up. And so are the ones that are on the side. So um, what did I want to do with that? Okay, hold on. So I'm just uh, doing what I did on my last one just to keep it simple. So now here, I want to see a little bit of that uh, small butterfly at the top. And I'm just kind of creating a pattern for myself and I want this butterfly to be even with that one and that one kind of on the same line. All right, and I just got to do a few more. I'm gonna build my, build my arrangement. Almost there. Darn that little sh bit of, mm, hate that. <laughs> well, I got to make it in line. So that might just be showing. How'd I get that little bit of black in there? Hate that. Oh well. <laughs> I'm sure that happens to other people as well. Okay, I got my base. And now I'm going to make an arrangement of butterflies over the top. So I can do this in a whole bunch of different ways. And one of the ways I did was coloring them in with the blends. Now. I've gotten this one started, so I'm going to do the rest of it, but I'm not going to color all of them for this card. I'll show you the finished card in just a minute, but in case there's anybody out there that maybe hasn't played with the blends before or would like to see how I do it, I'm going to go ahead and just finish that one butterfly, and then I'll um, show you the finished card. Hi, hi Ros Rosalie from Australia. Yay. <laughs> oh, a mono sand eraser. Yes, I do. That's a very good idea. That's, yes, exactly. There you go. I do have that. Okay, so that's probably going to take off that little bit of black. So this is a nice tool for any of you out there that might have this same issue come up. It's a bit of a lot of black. Stamp It Up doesn't sell this, but that's okay. Maybe I just got it online. Somebody, one of my team members actually got one for everybody. They were like $2 or something. Anyway, probably still need to work on that, but I'm not going to do it now. Okay, so now for this, because I'm covering sort of a large area, I'm starting with my dark pool party. And what I've colored on here so far is the navy, light, and dark. So the dark and the light. And I did a pattern in there, and then this is the pool party in the center. So I'm just going to cover the whole thing. And I'm using this fat tip because it's quicker. But for most of it, I'm going to use the small nubby tip because it gives you a lot more control. When you use this fat tip, more ink seems to come out. And you're more likely to get it outside the lines. So I'm starting with that. And now I'm going to do my, start with my dark Bermuda Bay. And I'm going to use the small tipped end. And when I color, I do actually like to sit down. <laughs> Hi, Fran from New Hampshire. Welcome. Okay, so now I'm just doing a little bit of my dark. So you can um, tell that if you're going to spend the time to do the blends on all these butterflies, the result is really quite beautiful. I will show you my results, and I think it's quite beautiful, but it takes a lot of time. You gotta wanna sit down and, and play, and there's nothing wrong with that, but sometimes you don't have time for that. So I'm gonna show you a couple of alternatives because this set is so versatile. I hope you guys can hear me because now I'm down low, down here with my coloring. Okay, so you can see the difference between this side and this side. That's not blended, so we got a little bit more work to do on this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back with this, the pool party, and work this 
where the two colors meet. And by adding a little bit more of the pool party, it makes another shade of color that helps it look more blended. And I'm gonna do some of, a little bit more of the dark Bermuda Bay to create more contrast near the center of the butterfly. And then, last but not least, I'm gonna come in with my color lifter and help to kind of blur those lines even more. So for some of you who follow me, you've probably heard me say this before, but typically I am not a coloring in sort of girl. I'm not patient, I don't wanna sit and wait and take a long time, I'm in the rush to get to the next thing, but the blends have kind of made me a convert <laughs> because you really, I mean, it just makes me feel like an artist and I've never really felt like I had much talent when it came to coloring in. But how can you argue with that? Isn't that beautiful? I think it's beautiful. I pat myself on the back. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to show you the end result, show you a couple of other butterflies, and then we'll wrap it up. Okay, so here is my finished result. So um, this is actually the subject of my uh, of the tutorial bundle project, my my contribution to the Gingham Gala product suite bundle, Simple Sweet Stampers bundle. So I just colored that one, put some pearls on there, so medium size and three small. And then, so you can see these two were colored the same way, these two were colored the same way, and then I've got those in the middle. Just a quick little bit on the color. So for this one and this one, I used um, the Highland Heather, light and dark, and I used the Rich Razzleberry for a little touch of extra color in there. And then this used Daffodil Delight and Pumpkin Pie. Um, so uh, anyway, that, you know, as you can tell, because I only did half of the butterfly in front of you guys. It took me a long time to make this, but I just love it. One of my favorite things, one of the first things I made with this set. Now, if you want some shortcuts, <laughs> here's some other ideas. So here, I've taken some of the same colors that I used on these, and this is uh, stamped off Bermuda Bay, stamped off Night of Navy. When I did it full inking, I think I did it somewhere, it was super dark, and maybe I didn't do that one, but I did, do these that way. So this is Highland Heather and Blackberry Bliss, full inking, second inking. The full inking, you lose a lot of the detail in the butterfly. So that's why I decided to do second inking. And then the other ones versions I did to try to capture the bit of the yellow and orange was this one. And this is um, Crushed Curry and um, what did I use there? I think it was, um, dang. Grapefruit Grove, I believe, Grapefruit Grove. And then this is stamped off in those same two colors. So I was looking for trying to get similar weights and colors so that when I combined them on the card, I'm thinking this, this, and that are the ones that I wanna use. I'll punch them out, do their central body element, and then pop them on there and I've got a much quicker card. Now, again, these I stamped with that, the stamp where, that I showed you in the other project where you have the top and the bottom, and then that little itty bitty one to do the top and the bottom of the small butterfly. So that's a whole lot faster to do the stamping or the stamping off. And I have so many butterflies, so much fun. So I'll put this card together um, when I'm off camera and I will share it on my website. I will share projects uh, in my blog post for this one, for the other two projects I showed you, and then also the version that I make with this. And uh, I want to show you a few other quick things with the Butterfly Gala stamp set and bundle that are just so much fun. Um, this was actually created by my team member, Melissa, who's coming with me to on stage. Um, this was actually a swap at our North Carolina Demonstrators event. Um, pretty rhinestones. Now these, this is yet another way to use this butterfly. We used um, a sponge dauber, familiar with that. Fits right on your little finger. Love that. Um, and used uh, granny apple green in the center and the uh, Pacific point on the outside. And of course, this is retired paper because it's uh, the botanical butterfly paper that was from Celebration, but just still, I had to show it. So pretty. This one was one of the cards my um, 
Card Ministry group made last night, really simple. Again, the retired designer paper. This image is from the Rooted in Nature set, but I just love this really simple design, and you could use all kinds of designer paper in back and you know, pull the design together like that real fast. This was the subject of a blog post a few days ago, and it, uh, uh, anyway, similar, similar look to this one, of course. I used the designer paper again, so it has those colors in it, which is why I use the colors in the background. And then some of you will recognize this little lovely series that I did a while back, the floating cards. I love these. So it's got the window sheet on the inside and then butter butterflies floating. And um, I shared these in the same post as this little array of butterflies or large array of butterflies where I showed multiple techniques um, on that. So I think I'm pretty much ready to wrap up and I'm just going to say hello to you with my face for a second and uh, turn it around. It's me. I'm here. <laughs> Happy Thursday. So, okay, I'm a little wonky here. So, um, if you haven't already, check out the storage solution options that Stampin' Up! is now offering. I think it's so great that they are offering them to us now. And um, check out my blog post tomorrow. This video will be on YouTube also tomorrow. Um, and I guess that's pretty much it. Comment, let me know what you think. Share the share this video with anybody and everybody who you think might enjoy it. I would love that. That helps me if you share. And um, I'll see you next Wednesday. Happy crafting, everybody. Thank you so much. Go create and have fun. <laughs> Bye.